record snow, flash floods, and a heated mayor's race. Just a few of the major events we covered in 2023. As this year comes to a close, here's a look back at the Northland's biggest stories of the last 365 days. We begin with breaking news tonight. On a bitter cold day in February, two tragedies rocked Duluth in a matter of hours. In late afternoon of the 24th, a single engine plane left Duluth International Airport and then crashed into the frozen St. Louis River near the Bong Bridge. It looked dark, I saw a big ploof of black smoke. The lone person on board, 52-year-old David Rathbun of Hermantown, died. He was a longtime Cirrus engineer. The cause of the crash remains unknown. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Duluth's Endion neighborhood, police responded to reports of a man making threats against a family member. Put your hands up! Get your hands up! They arrived to find 34-year-old Zachary Shogren in the alley behind his home armed with a knife. The situation quickly escalated and officers shot and killed him. That incident, captured on body cameras, was investigated by several outside agencies. Months later, the Cook County attorney ruled the officer's actions justified. The winter of 2023 was historic. Snowstorm after snowstorm hammered the Northland, including the Twin Ports. The unprecedented barrage of winter weather came to a head on the morning of March 14th. Oh my God. When the roof of the Miller Hill Mall partially collapsed. I, I don't know, this is kind of shocking to see. No injuries, but in addition to the damage, a portion of the mall would remain closed for an extended period of time as crews cleared snow from the remainder of the roof to avoid more trouble. We saw the snowiest December ever recorded. We saw the third snowiest March ever recorded. And the snow kept on coming with several more storms through the end of April. By the time the final flake flew, Duluth broke its all-time record for most snow in a season with 140 inches. Bayfield and Brainerd also set new marks for a winter. And then it all had to melt, which unsurprisingly led to flooding. In mid-April, the St. Louis River rapidly rose, nearly touching the underside of the swinging bridge at Jay Cook State Park. The river's spike also forced the evacuation of Sappy's paper mill in Cloquet and nearly overtook a bar in Scanlon. Building's becoming an, an island right now. It's seeping around. Thankfully, the snow melt was slow enough that what many thought would be catastrophic flooding never materialized. In late June, another tragic plane crash involving Cirrus employees, this time in the Pequon Lakes area north of Duluth, Law enforcement rushing to the aircraft shortly after it went down. When you come up on the scene, you don't know where you're going to find. You're hoping to find survivors. Sadly, that wasn't the case. Both men on board, 60-year-old Brian Handyside and 64-year-old Matthew Joseph, both from the Duluth area, died in the crash. They were co-workers at Cirrus. It remains unclear what caused the crash. In late July, an historic day for Duluth, the largest private investment in the city's history open to the public. This building was designed not to be what I would call a medical facility, but what I would call as a place of healing. More than four years after breaking ground on its Vision Northland project, Essential welcomed patients inside its new $900 million hospital. Essentia moved all 232 patients to the new facility in a single day. A special edition of the Northern News Now News at 5. An event so big, we did our shows live on the hospital's rooftop. We're on the rooftop of the new St. Mary's Medical Center tonight, which is just <laughs> outstanding. With everything now transferred to the new building, the old St. Mary's Medical Center is set to be demolished. Check this out, the water rushing. In September, back-to-back -back flash flood events within a matter of days. Days. The first hitting Duluth the night of Monday, September 11th, right as we came on air at 10. It was amazing driving around on my dinner break earlier. It just felt tropical. But right now we have some pretty bad flooding going on in uh, Duluth proper right now. As much as six inches of rain falling on the city in a couple hours, flooding I-35 tunnels and sending a wave of water rushing down the hill and into homes, roads, and parking lots. Thankfully, no injuries. Less than two weeks later, another flash flood, this time inundating neighborhoods and buildings up on the hill. We had six inches of water in the garage. Another multi-inch rainfall making roads near the mall impassable for most of the day. However, city leaders praised water infrastructure upgrades following the 2012 flood for helping avoid more trouble. Oh, it's really big. 
It could change everything. It had been 16 years since Duluth had a competitive mayor's race. But in January, former State Senator Roger Reinert announced he was challenging Mayor Emily Larson. Then to serve as your next mayor of Duluth. Thank you. It was clear he posed a real threat to Larson after the August primary, where Reinert claimed 65% of the vote. That led to a heated debate weeks before the election, live on our air. I would love to do more, and I am unwilling to put our community at financial risk. They built up $68 million. They spent it in three years. Um, and now primarily spend their money on maintaining instead of rebuilding. And three weeks later, Reinert officially defeated the mayor in a race that generated high turnout and statewide interest. Reinert takes office January 2nd. A shocking tragedy overseas in late October. Goal! Johnson! Hibby native and former UMD hockey player Adam Johnson was playing for a pro team in England when what was originally called a freak accident claimed his life. A player's skate cut his neck in the middle of a game. He later passed away at a hospital. The hockey world rallied around Johnson's family at events like this memorial in Hibby. Just a wonderful, wonderful human being. The incident went on to spark change in the sport globally, with hockey leagues and organizations requiring players to wear a net guard. The sale of a pillar of American manufacturing sent shockwaves through the Northland business and political world. In mid-December, U.S. Steel, which owns two Iron Range mining facilities, was purchased by Japan's Nippon Steel for $15 billion. The move stunned United Steelworkers, who said they weren't informed. Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle promised to investigate and review, making it far from a done deal. What winter? December 2023 looks to go down as the warmest and rainiest ever for Duluth and many other Northland cities. The unprecedented weather continues to wreak havoc on ski resorts and other businesses that need cold and snow. This would be the busiest day of the year, <laughs> so it's a, little, it's a little bit of a bummer to have everything melted out. With bare ground for most, events like the Berkey and Bear Grease could see significant changes if winter doesn't arrive soon. And Adam says if December ended today, it would be the warmest ever by several degrees. We could also end up in the top five least snowy Decembers ever. If the current trend continues, the winter overall would certainly make our list of biggest stories of 2024.